there is this light. It's a light that suddenly was encompassing me. It was a pillar, a pillar of light, and it dissolved me into itself. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. Our guest today is Dr. Fran Grace. She had an experience of light. Dr. Fran Grace is the founding director of Inner Pathway, as well as a professor of religious studies at the University of Redlands. Fran's teacher and mentor was Dr. David R. Hawkins, and she collaborated on several of his books, including Power Versus Force and Map of Consciousness. She is the author of Power of Love, A Transformed Heart Changes the World. This is her story and this is her passion. Dr. Fran Grace, welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Oh, Louisa, I am really happy to be here with you and the people listening, whoever they may be. We don't know, do we? No. Who knows? Well, let's get started. I'd like to start with you, if you don't mind, about your incredible experience of love and light when you were 15. Oh, okay. Um, well, that, that takes me back. I'm 58 now. So uh, somebody who's good at math can calculate. It's a long time ago, many decades ago, right? But those experiences, uh, we never forget them. And as soon as I close my eyes, I'm instantly back in that classroom. It was in high school. I was in 10th grade English class. And uh, you may remember a teenage mind, what that's like, how it's all over, you know, oh, I hope, I hope so and so likes me like I like them, uh, you know, what about my acne, what about what the fights at home and, you know, all of the anxieties that are going on in that mind. But suddenly as I'm sitting there and the teacher is up front lecturing, suddenly as I'm sitting there, there is this light. It's a light that suddenly was encompassing me. It was a pillar, a pillar of light, and it dissolved me into itself. Suddenly, all of those anxieties, they were gone. Suddenly, all the thoughts, there were no thoughts. Everything was totally, instantly, beautifully silent. It was silent. And there was utter peace that I didn't exist. You understand? I was gone. But the light I knew and the love, it was, um, it didn't have a temperature. It wasn't like a sunlight. It wasn't like a, a light from the, from the ceiling. Um, it had a quality of energy and love. It was living, uh, but it was a presence and took nothing. It just dissolved me into it, into its love. And I felt like it had always been me. And it happened spontaneously. So can you just imagine you're sitting there, you know, maybe for some people it happens at work or it happens when they're just washing the dishes. It can happen anywhere. Suddenly, you have this spontaneous experience where everything else disappears and you're in the presence of this incredible infinite love and light. So I was sitting there and it just, it just, I was out of time. There was no time, there, were, there was no mind. Uh, there was just this love and this light, and it, it was a pillar that just dissolved me into it. I saw nothing else, you know, and I, I just, there was, everything's here, the room, the teacher, everyone around me. Um, and then suddenly, it left. And 
I looked around and I, I wanted to jump out of my seat and say, oh my God, did you see that? Did you see that? What was that? What was that? But I, I recognized that, oh my gosh, they didn't see it. It happened, it happened to me. It was something that happened to me. There was nothing I had done. I hadn't been meditating. I, I, you know, there was nothing that brought it on. Uh, so that that experience at 15 um, is forever uh, unforgettable and it changed the course of my life and um, it wasn't until my 30s when I met my spiritual teacher that I even had any context to understand you know what the hell was that um, so I just described an experience that lasted I don't know how long maybe a few seconds and uh, these last decades have been like for many people you have an experience and you seek to try to, <laughs> to live that to experience it again even if just for a couple minutes but david hawkins is rarest to the rare because he had an experience at 38 where he dissolved into that state not the same i had i'm sure his is you know you know mine, mine might be a little nightlight and <laughs> This was the radiance of the sun, so we're not comparing here. And uh, his ego never came back. So he's rarest of the rare, and I got to spend several years with him. I, I first met him in, uh, when I was in my 30s, and um, I moved to be with him in Arizona and spent the last few years while he was living, working on several projects together, and including this book, The Power of Love book, that got us together. Um, we say the teacher is the one who has the key to our heart of hearts. So we all have our heart, and that's where love and passion are, right, Louisa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the heart, and, the, and but in the heart of hearts, no one else has a key to that inner sanctuary, except one spiritual guide, one's true spiritual guide. And uh, for each of us, it's a different being, and he was that for me. He had the key to my heart of hearts. So, you know, instantly when I met him, I recognized what he was. Didn't understand it, uh, but the soul knew. The soul knew. You know, we're on a treasure hunt in this life. If we're really conscious of what our life is about, we're on a search for the treasure that lies as our birthright. He called it a birthright, the peace and bliss that he himself inhabited. So these great beings, they, they have an experience that they say was a gift, and then they share it in the way that they can to help us who are struggling along on our path to find the way. They go to the top of the mountain and they give us a map saying, well, you better, uh, you know, avoid that crazy route. <laughs> Don't go there, you know, there's all kinds of horrible things that are gonna, you know, sidetrack you and waylay you and, but come up here, you know, here's a signpost. So the map of consciousness is what he laid out in Power Versus Force. It's a book that goes into great detail about every energy field on the map of consciousness. I found it very striking for me because I was raised in a fundamentalist religious sect maybe like other people, where you're taught guilt is the way to God. You know, feel crappy about yourself. <laughs> you ate five cookies today? Well, you know, beat yourself up about that one and somehow you'll earn God's respect or something. <laughs> guilt and shame, you know, flagellation. Uh, but those are at the bottom of the chart, you know. He would laugh and say, well, guilt isn't very helpful. It just gets you an ulcer, not God. <laughs> um, but in his book, Power Versus Force, he says that this level of love vibrates, radiates at such a frequency that it actually one person, one being that calibrates in that energy field of love. And we have to say here, it's rare. All right. We all, we all have our moments, we all have moments where I really feel, you know, Anamkara, soul friend to all of life. It's so beautiful to have that unconditional love for, for all others, but it's rare. But he said that if there's a being that calibrates, you know, at that level, they counterbalance the negativity of 750,000 people 
under 200, that is on his map, um, 750,000 people that calibrate at, at levels of anger or hate or... And so um, it's really important what you're saying about the vibration. It's not about what we go out and do to change the world. <laughs> it's who we are on the inside. And if we um, open our hearts, and often it happens with breakage, you know, our hearts break. Our hearts break. So sometimes the, the most painful moments of our life where we lose everything, you know, we lose a child like we did last year to COVID. Or we lose, you know, when I lost Dr. Hawkins as a teacher of physical presence 10 years ago. That happened 10 years ago this week. September 19th, 2012, Rosh Hashanah. He died on Rosh Hashanah. You know, at the moment of his death, I just was, um, it's just, it's taken me years, you know, I'm still, I'm still grieving, obviously. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, because uh, it's just the connection is beyond words and deep. And, uh, so the heart breaks, you know, and then maybe some love, you know, can be um, emitted into our being. And that's, according to his book and his teaching, much more powerful than going out and doing a crusade for love. <laughs> or, or um, you know what I'm talking about, our great causes, the great causes that we fight for. I, I just want to say I'm, I'm so sorry for, of course, Dr. Hawkins' loss for you, but also for your child. Hmm. I don't know how someone gets over something like that. Well, it, it um, for me, I've been interested in death and dying, and I know you've had wonderful people like Howard Storm here on your show. I love that show. Thank you so much for interviewing people who have near-death experiences. And as you may know, in Power Versus Force, Dr. Hawkins calibrates those experiences right on the cusp of uh, the high states of love and into uh, the state of enlightenment, which is the dissolution of the ego. Because there's this presence of that light there that we, uh, by grace, uh, may dissolve into. And, um, but the death, I'm interested in death. And in fact, right now I'm doing a death doula training that is uh, being with people in that portal, uh, that gateway of when they leave the body and uh, you know what happens for them. And uh, in that moment of dying, a whole journey can be redeemed by love. I just wanna to touch on something you said before, when our heart breaks, whatever experience that may be, and it can be so many experiences for us to be broken on the floor without, we feel our hearts broken. And you say it's an opportunity to embrace and experience more love. Um, unfortunately, some, it can be used as an opportunity for growth or an opportunity to remain stagnant and not to embrace love. What would be your advice of how to, not necessarily in grief, because grief is different for everyone, but how can we embrace love in those heartbreaking moments? Such a very touching question. So I gather, you know what I mean, you've been through it. You've been through, you know, your, your own experience of heartbreak. You know, when a marriage ends or when a child gets lost to illusion, you know, that's very hard. That's even more difficult sometimes than when a child passes in death, when a child gets lost. Um, everything has a purpose and all that business. I don't know. I, I really don't know the why of things. I just know that um, when the heart breaks, then it breaks open. And there is something to share there. And for example, um, uh, Peter's death and Dr. Hawkins' death have have just, as I as I follow the thread of that experience um, through the pain, through the loss. I mean, there, you know, nights and nights and nights of anguish and regret especially with Peter, regret, you know, should have done this, should have done that, you know, how are we going to 
you know, not have him in our life. Um, and with Dr. Hawkins, the pain, the, the grief of not having his physical presence here because he was the locus of that only, he was the only, only presence of pure love on the planet for me. The only place where I could go and, and just feel loved in my being. You know, he never, he never said, oh, you know, I just think it's great everything you've accomplished. <laughs> he never asked me, how many followers do you have? Or, I mean, it was just so, all those outer things that we clamor to uh, accomplish, hoping that somebody will notice or you know, love us or we'll feel, you know, better about ourselves. He just always noted, well, you know, when you took the doggy out today, Kelsey, his dog, you know, I would go over there and take her out when he couldn't. Um, did she relieve herself? And if I said, yeah, she did, doc, she did. He would say, oh, that's very wonderful that she felt comfortable with you. You're safe for her. Do you see how that, that love, real love, acknowledges the inner qualities of others? So I, I've taken that as a practice. I don't point out the greatness of people's rewards or awards or, you know, all those outer achievements. I just really, with the eye of the heart, look for, you know, what are the qualities inside that person? Like for you, Louisa, you know, you've had great courage and you're generous of spirit, the way that you invite people, ordinary little people like me to share, you know, what we have to share and you make it available to others in such a lovely way. So to appreciate those inner qualities. So all of that comes 10 years after his death. So the heart breaks open. And over time, if we're willing, then we'll start to notice the gift that was given us in that experience. And we can share it. I was gonna well I'm I was gonna ask you for advice, but now I'm just gonna ask you personally. What what's your what's your personal advice for you to live your best life or your most aligned soul's path? Mm. Well uh, where I'm at right now is uh, there's a, there's a Sufi teaching. Um, Wheresoever I turn, there's the face of the beloved. So, whatever happens, <laughs> you happened in my life today and it's really glorious. I'm very delighted to get to meet with you and uh, I hope it's been helpful to you and other people. I hope so, you know, that's the prayer. <laughs> Before we started today, I just said a little prayer, please help me. Uh, be helpful to others um, but I don't know what the rest of the day is and I, I don't know what's happening uh, tomorrow so to live my best life is really to see what life brings me in the moment and I've spent a lot of my life planning out the years ahead and goals I had <laughs> and 99% uh, of them never turned out there's no no point in my life did I sit down and say I really want to meet a spiritual teacher or you know I want to live in Arizona near him or I want to write a book on love or everything that's happened in my life I just would never I never planned and so to just accept uh, what's happening it's a nice starting point anyway I really am not uh, making a lot of plans empty space so. Um, my love mate and I have had a lot of losses this last year. A lot, a lot has been uh, stripped away. And uh, so really the place we're in is holding an empty space, not trying to fill it up. Um, and uh, so I like that empty space to see what comes. Fran Grace, it's been, I've loved having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my honor. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.